Welcome everyone to Auto Gefühl. I'm AJ and this is the all new Mercedes E-Class Estate. And I really do mean all new because the first thing I notice is of course the new design at the front. These headlamps have a new interesting signature with these two wave-like curves. I might need a little bit of time to get used to this. What about you? But another interesting aspect of the design is the front grille. You notice that they have this mask and they're trying to bring the design language similar or closer to the EQ, the electric models. Another interesting detail is the LED strip here which illuminates the front grille. You have different design lines including the avant-garde, the exclusive, but what you see here is the AMG line, so a much more stronger athletic looking lower part of the bumper. The new E-Class is a little bit longer than before, but most importantly, the wheelbase has been stretched a little bit to give more space in the rear seats. The design also is very typical Mercedes with a sharp crease here at the front. I do like these wheels, 20 inches, very flush and aerodynamic. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about the different engine options later on, but check out these flush door handles too, pretty cool. Um, you get the night pack, with that you get this black trim along the windows. Now it's interesting because the rear axle comes as standard with air suspension, the front doesn't. You can optionally get a full uh, air suspension package, however there is still no option to get rear axle steering. And that's because for the estate, in order to liberate more space in the trunk, they have had to use a different architecture here in the rear axle and that doesn't allow for that. Another main change here with the E-Class Estate for this generation is the tapering angle of the D-pillar. It's a little bit more raked to kind of give a slightly shooting brake-esque design. And yes, that does take a little bit of volume away uh, from the trunk interior, along with the longer wheelbase, which has pushed the seats a little bit further back. But we'll take a closer look at that in a minute. I do really like the TriStar design for the LED signature here. And you do get this dark red reflective element here, connecting it again with the EQ models. Further down, being the AMG line, of course, you have the diffuser, but fake exhaust tips. But overall, very wide and low stance here in the rear. Okay, so in the trunk, like I was saying, they have done what they can to try to maximize the space, but like I mentioned, this volume as it stands here with the seats up is a little bit lower than before because of the seats being moved further back. That being said, once you do put the seats down, now this is 10 liters more than you had in the previous generation at about 1,830 liters. One more caveat, however, is if you get the plug-in hybrid like you see here, there is no volume underneath. In fact, there is this pretty odd looking step up right here where the battery pack and so on are contained. Therefore, this does reduce it once again. But overall, with the seats down, with this versatility, you still have the most space ever in an E-Class estate. Mercedes is all about technology. That's the name of the game. And this new E-Class is no different. Sometimes I wonder, what are they gonna think of next? Well, I'll tell you. But first, let's take a quick look at the seats. These are the Napa leather uh, seats, but you do get man-made artificial leather, so the Artico seats, even sport seats with microfiber in the middle are also available. If you take a look inside, you may notice the super screen. You might remember the hyper screen from the EQ models. The passenger with this can do some, uh, like set up the navigation, or they can also watch uh, movies online. And if you're driving and they're watching a movie, you can listen to it, but you cannot see that. So there's like a Polaroid layer which will activate. So this being the new MBUX version, there's some interesting things like third-party apps like TikTok and Angry Birds, which of course you can play only when you're stationary. But the icons are also a lot larger now, very easy to see. I like this, I prefer this. Some interesting things include, for example, a selfie camera. So there we are. And you can use this while it's uh, stationary to do video conferencing and things like that. But also, you can take a selfie. There we go. Um, you can also set some interesting routines. So for example, let's say if it's really cold outside and you want it to automatically turn on the seat heater, uh, you can set that up. For example, we have it here to say if it's less than 15 degrees, turn on the seat heating. Or if you have, for example, after driving for 15 minutes, turn on the seat massage. This does not mean, however, that you can pre-program the car to warm itself before you get in. You still have to do that with the connected app, not with routines. 
Some other interesting things which I'm not sure I completely like is the fact that there is no static climate control menu like we see, for example, in the new C-Class with the GLC. So you have to come into this menu and then you have a second tab to activate that. But what you also see here is that you get digital vent control. What's digital vent control? Well, if you look up here, check this out. Whoop magic. <laughs> so the vents actually rotate in turn on their own based on how you have set the, um, the position. You can still manually control that so it doesn't break. This instrument cluster looks familiar. However, what you cannot see on the camera is the fact that this is actually now in 3D. Plenty of knee room, plenty of space for me to slide my feet under the front seat. Now I'm not a very tall man. This is set to my driving position. I'm five foot eight or about 1.73 meters. So sitting behind myself, this is definitely very spacious, very comfortable, plenty of headroom, very comfortable, wide and long seat base. So it gives me pretty good under thigh support, have additional air conditioning vents here, as well as on the B pillar. And of course the ambient lighting and just generally the ambiance of the E-Class Estate definitely feels very luxurious. All right, so what kind of engine options do we get? Well, you get two liter turbo four petrol and diesel options. In fact, in the future, there will also be a three liter inline six option. They all come mated to the 9G Tronic automatic transmission. The higher engines get the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system as standard, but you can optionally get them in the lower ends as well. There, of course, will be plug-in hybrid versions available in the European market and other select markets. In fact, in the US, you have to wait until there's the E-Class Estate all-terrain version to even be able to get this estate in the first place. I'm excited to get my hands on the wheel of this estate and take it for a spin. Unfortunately, I cannot do that today, but pretty soon. So make sure you're subscribed and like if you've enjoyed this video, leave your comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.